everybody, it's Roxbox90 here with the Mono Red EDH deck tech starring this Haidetsugu. So this is my friend's deck, who is actually here with me. We're going to be doing dual commentary. Let's start off. So Heartless Haidetsugu doesn't seem to be the most particularly political general. Why do you pick Haidetsugu? Like, what particularly got him interested? What of his ability? His well, I wanted to do a monocolor deck, and I went through my uh, Legend Binder, and he looked interesting. Which you saw in the Legendary like picking your general video and um he looked very interesting and i needed fun to build around and he was awesome in the books so. yeah he's really wild in the books. anyway heartless is so pretty much he's not quite the center of the deck but there are lots of combos with him and though he's a very unusual general the deck itself is really rather interesting because it's not as aggro as you think so there are 24 mountains in the deck and then we have some non-basic lands Simply yeah. it's, just, it's just cycle for two. Cycle. Forgotten Cave, pretty much the same thing, except it does it cost one mountain instead of two colorless to cycle. Barbarian Ring, it does one damage, and with you tap it, it gives you a red mana pool, and it does one damage to you. And Threshold, you tap one, tap it, sacrifice it to deal two damage to our creature or player. So what about this land is... This is useful. It well, it could be useful as a late game. Kill the general if I need to. And... It's useful to get me on an odd number of life for when I use a Hidetsugu combo to kill off everybody. Except for me, who, everybody, anybody on an even number of life. Right, because we're very friendly political here and we don't want to kill everyone. So, <laughs> that's we wouldn't do that. Valakut, Molten Pinnacle, pretty much speaks for well, himself, right? Yeah, anything, any red deck needs to have. It, so. Craziness, this is Spine Rock Knoll, what about it? It's Hideaway. And, and its ability triggers off if I activate Hidetsugu. Right Which away. is even cooler because it, if opponent was dealt seven damage, Hitsugu does automatically seven damage. At least. And it can go off. And if you hide away something good, it's a nice card to have. We have a Keldin Megalith, which hits by tap, taps for a red. And if you have Hellbend, which means you have no cards in your hand, it also it you can tap two, tap it to do one damage to our creature or player. You can also use that I guess to take you down to Yeah, just another option. It's another option to bring you down into the odd, right? Hitsugu yeah. taps for half your life total. And double that so And a Mad Blind Mo Mountain, which can shuffle your library. It's only good if you have two, red, two or more red permanents, which you always do. And it's a nice option, right? Yeah, I mean, just why not? Let's you shuffle your deck if you keep drawing land and you have a sensitive divining top, you realize you're in trouble. You're in the Moaning Well, add to call us. Tap three to sacrifice it. You gain life targets to sacrifice creature's toughness. Any, which particular creatures would you sacrifice for this? Um, well, I mean, I could sacrifice a Hoarding Dragon to get the artifact. Or does also, again, if I sacrifice a guy with odd number toughness to get me on an odd number of life. Or just to gain life if someone's wrathing. It can protect from Hidetsugu. And just, and just save. Or is it get in a, sacrifice a creature in response to wrath and then gain some life. And Which is your shelter's all. I guess it's pretty obvious. You run a ton of burn that runs yes. X in here. So, or even any spell that has colorless in the cost, make it, you can make it uncounterable. Yeah. Comes to play tapped, it pays three life. Which, if you spend on a creature, it has haste, so I guess... It's called to give Hidetsugu, another way to give him haste. You give Hidetsugu haste, then you can give really any of your creatures haste. Temple yeah. of the False God is just soaring on a land. Yes, right. Ancient Tomb is another soaring on a land, except this one, it does you two damage every time you tap it. But then again, I guess if you get it early... It and well, and red decks need some way to ramp, so this is one of the only ways right. to do it. Right, Ballard, which is a funny card because it's basically the old school first Planeswalker. Yeah, Even though it's much. not a Planeswalker, but... It's kind of the same idea. It has three different abilities, each one stronger than the other. And it kills itself with the last one. Which it, it does lots of damage to each creature and each player, so it's a board wipe. And your first, the first ability can destroy blue permanent, which is you know kind of good against any deck that runs blue. And it also lets you deal three damage to a creature or player, and they can't regenerate. So it's, it's kind of incinerate. like it's, it's incinerate on a stick, which is and you can discard things like anger. Gives your creatures haste when it's in the graveyard. So it's just a really nice card to have all around. It's pretty cheap utility. It's a heretic. Pretty straightforward, right? I mean, he's not hes not very complicated. Yeah, it destroys artifacts. He destroys nice them. threat to have out. Right, because you really, you're often concerned. People, people are off. like, people are like, hey, hey I, how about you politicize with me? And you're like, okay, well, remember, you're a red deck, so you're often not political. But and in this case, if people are afraid of you destroying their artifacts, they may very well work something alone. out with you. And it also does damage equal to the artifact's casting cost, so if you're playing with a big a deck that runs expensive artifacts that you can destroy with him, then he can do a lot of damage. Anger, as we said, just when it's in your graveyard, it gives haste, so you really want it to die 
and they're always to discard it. Yeah, and people don't want to attack into you if you have it, because then they know what it does. Right. Flametown Kavu. Just Just classic awesome, and he kills a lot of generals. Kills generals. Also, I guess, partly flavor also. It's like yeah. old school. It's one of those amazingly awesome crazy, interesting cards from the past. And it's these in blocker also. Solemn, another basically ramp card, and it gives you a draw. Yeah. And it's another, an another reason not to attack me. Right. Another reason to be a political. All right, now we have Stuffy Doll is another preventer, I guess. Yeah, another, another blocker, another way to keep someone from attacking with a big creature, especially if, I, if they're the one I picked with it. Right, because it will do that much damage to the player. And it's a really great combo with Pyrohemia, which we'll get to later. We have Fire Servant, which simply put just makes instant sorcery spells deal double damage. It's on a yes. stick. Remaster the Hidden gives haste. More haste and keeps everybody else slower. Right, because their creatures hit play tapped. And he's just, you know, really cool art and nice card. Hoarding Dragon, that it just gets you an artifact, and then when it yeah, dies, it's still you get the artifact. flying yeah. anyway, and... Right, so it's a nice body, good flyer. And again, another reason, another reason not to attack. Kumano, who is really underrated. I've played against him a bunch of times. Oh, he's now. one of the, he's one of the more popular red generals. Right, but he's not the general here because Hidetsugu is more fun. More fun, actually, which is funny. But Kumano is a little more competitive focused. However, in the deck, it's really good because he can do damage, and if you kill a creature, it exiles it. And if there's a lot of land around, it's really easy to do that. And, and even better is if they're going to lose the creature, or they're close to losing the creature, you can just ping in the last one or two damage. And if he has a Basilisk Collar on him, it's just two damage, exile target creature. Right. Because of Death Touch. Game end. This guy is really he's a funny. Game ending, like, he's card. a game-ending card, actually, even though people are like, what, he's an uncommon from World Wake? Yeah. So what does no he do? No one ever saw him. He's so, basically, well, he's a 5 for 4 4 and multi kicker, which is just a red. And when he enters the battlefield, he has damage equal to the target player equal to twice the number of times he was kicked. So if he was kicked four times, he does eight damage. And as, uh, I mean, and then if I have a Furnace of Wrath out or Gratuitous Violence, that's 16 damage. And if. Right. And of course, if you pay more, it's only, kicker's yeah. only one. So and if you have 10, 12 mana, he can just go up into a crazy. You can kill a player in one hit. Right, so he's insane. Kazul's another blocker because whenever a creature opponent controls attacks, you can put a 3-3 Ogre into play unless they pay 3. Early game, they usually don't pay 3, and then you get some blockers, right? Yeah, and then just another reason to keep away. Now, a, a, an aggro card here, Steel Hawkeye. It's, it's a flying dragon, and, it, and it's good for another threat. If that bothers me, just attack and kill their soul ring or kill their right, cheap for things. Very cheap, yeah. For very cheap. And even if you have the mana lying around... Because yeah, you, and he could be sending could be searched up with the hoarding dragon also. Come on, pit fighter. He's a six one haste. That Kills generals. And he also can just ping off utility guys. Or just ping someone's life down right. slowly. And if he attacks with haste, if they don't have any blockers, it's six damage, that's a lot. Flame blast, blast dragon, it's blaze on a stick pretty much. Yeah. Go to so. the bandit lord, he's interesting. He gets you equipment into when he, play. Into play. And whenever he attacks, he also so he can, gets to attack twice. He can he can attack twice, even though your other rarely attacks. Can. But he very often doesn't. But he could search as a scholar or locks on a warhammer or a lightning weave. Chartooth Cougar. It's mountain cycling is only mountain crazy. cycling, <laughs> literally. <laughs> yeah. the Care Ridges. New into the deck, I haven't actually played him yet. But, but he's insane. <laughs> Basilisk scholar, he kills whatever I want, and he gains a lot of life. And in general, he just blows up. Everything. He's, he's, everything he's else wrath flies. on a stick for everything. Yeah, and he could clear the sky of everything else. And Huge flyer. Very powerful. Really underrated card. Artifacts. I guess we'll start off with some searching stuff. Yeah. So Journey's Kites. Gets land and filters it out and gets me more if I need it. It's a little expensive in terms of its cost, but... Red decks need it. Red decks really need to be able to render portal is just... The only tutor red could, aside from Gamble, that red could use. And this is more surefire if it's expensive. Right. And it's so it's basically a demonic tutor for six, but since you kind of can need it, well, and you can reuse it and reuse it, it's really nice. Ramping a little bit, we have Soul Ring, which is pretty obvious. Yeah. Although this is a multiplayer deck in one versus one, I wouldn't necessarily recommend. But this Soul deck Ring. does not play one versus one. Basically, a four plus player deck. Unless against another red deck, right? <laughs> but it's often it often gets just overwhelmed by other decks that can ramp. And we have a Dark Steel Ingot, which is more ramp. And it survives. And it's indestructible. Everything. So yeah. even wrath spells don't really help. Page Sun, which is a doubler, and it also can give almost one to your creature that you don't really use. That's mostly for doubler, right? Yes. Yeah, it's, it's just a mana doubler. Another mana doubler, which has the drawback of also helping other people who are using red. 
But then again, that's political because... Because if people benefit from me, they're not going to destroy it, which would be very good for me. Extra planar lens. And it functions the same way for this as Gauntlet of Power does, essentially. Right, where if because any mountain taps for the... For, for the, the double the also. Double. So other decks running... And that's a reason, and that's that. why I'm one of the reasons I'm not using Snowland, at least not right now. Because if I use Snowland, then anyone else using Ray will not benefit, and... They'll they destroy kill it. it in like a second, and then you lose a mountain, so you're behind, and it's bad. Anyway, Dreamstone Hedron kind of acts as both a mana ramp, because it gives you taps for three, but it also can sacrifice to draw three cards. So if I need to, yeah. So it's a draw end. Yeah, it's versatile. Mana. It's a little expensive, but it's okay in this deck, since it's actually made for long, long-term long games. Mind's Eye is a draw spell. Yeah, it's draw engine. amazing draw spell. Is keep it out, as long as it's, even if it's six for only a round. There's five people, five mana, I draw five cards, and refill the whole hand. And, just... and since you almost never tap out because you're playing yeah. a long-term game. And it's one of the main ways to draw with the deck, because there's not many red cards that do right. it. That's why all the artifacts have to supplement. Right, and since you are trying to be very political, hopefully you'll be able to convince people not to kill it, or at least convince some people to, to not kill it. Then we have... Sundroplet. Sundroplet, which when I first saw this, I was like, what is going on it's here? Life best, gain in a red deck? What, what? One of the best cards in the deck. So, want to tell me what you think about it? Tell us what you think about it. Well, I mean, it's one of these really underrated cards. From your yeah, when it, in case you don't know. Yeah, so what it actually does is whenever I'm dealt damage, I get put that many charge counters on it, and every up one off and gain a life. Every up keep. So it's every, every player. player. Yes. So basically, if you're playing on four or five people at a table, but if time someone gets, does you 10 damage, by the time it comes back to you... It's half of it's back. And then we play one game with like seven people, people. and attack me for like five or six. By the time we get back to my turn, I was fully back to 40 already. Yes. And I gained over 40 life from this one thing and never died. So it's absolutely no insane. It. It's an excellent, excellent card. And, and it just sits there and no one notices it because it doesn't do anything to them. So it just sits there innocently and no one touches it. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a waste if you destroy an artifact, at least in the eyes of most long-term EDH players. Another way to control your life is a training vessel. a lot vessel, less subtle. Which is very not subtle. But in a deck that you run, you usually have 30 to 40 life by the time this hits play on turn 5 or 6. So I suppose it's pretty useful. Yeah, well, if I play it and then I could just hit a Tsugu and then um, lose half my life and then... Play a land, play and, land just go back and I'm to, back to whatever I was before. And do it again, and again, and again. Because he's a very friendly political person. Thousand Year Elixir, which this is basically a Hidetsuku focus card. Yeah, another right? way to give him haste, and I could do his ability twice in one turn. Right, because it gives you it gives the, people the tap abilities, haste, and like untap a target creature. creature. And it, so you can do it twice in a row if you want. So it's a nice... Every not the 10. It's a really nice card. Lightning Greaves, another haste Yeah, option. another staple. Give him Shroud. Haste. And haste. But Shroud also because people will kill him if once he realizes what he actually This does. is why if you play with a group of people for the first time, then you're usually safe. The problem becomes when, when I win the first game. When you win when he wins the first game and then it goes on and on. Um, which has happened. Which now it's actually rather difficult to play in our me our local metal meta because people kill him. Slugs so a Warhammer, another option to gain life, I guess. Yeah, give life thing to Hitsugu, which is insane because if I just do his ability, I don't lose any life. And I gain everybody all the life that I do from Hassless Collar. Hassless Collar, which is way better than Warhammer, but it's just... Well, it's another... Uh, it's to have redundancy. Right. Basically, it gives a lot of a lot of creatures in the deck the the death touch... The option. Option. And the life thing. And also. the life thing for Hitetsuku, or even those other creatures. Yeah, like Charge of Carriage. So it's insane. Dalkin Orrery. I'm actually hoping to get one of these soon, because I need it for Omneth. But how does it work here? Well, I mean, it's just there, so when I, if I have it out, I can just play anything I want, all of my... Giant sorceries. Yeah, so it's whenever I want and just or anything. It's just another way to, to not have to tap my land and just do whatever I want. So it's really nice. Top, we don't really have to explain. <laughs> it's just it smooths out your mana and it's just really good. Especially for a deck like this. Right, because you really need it. Aftershock is simply put one of their only good red mono red removal that gets rid of right. so it's destroy. It destroys a creature. Uh, an, an artifact okay. or a land, okay. and, and it does three damage. Which another, and also Your which is stuff, actually right. a good thing sometimes to get me on it, get me on a even a uh, member of life or a hidden So it's really yeah. nice. And we have chaos warp, which is just another way of getting rid of an annoying permanent or general specifically because right. it puts it in the deck. Right, and then it reveals the top card, and you hope that they shuffle well and they don't get the general back. <laughs> yeah, 